and I'm going to be speaking about our Next Edge Private Lending Fund. Uh, I think it's fairly topical in the sense that uh, after a week like last week, uh, our fund had essentially no volatility or movement to its price, other than maybe a little bit of accrued interest. Um, the Prior to kind of uh, focusing a little bit on what we're doing in the fund, I thought I'd give a little background as far as uh, some of the opportunity in the private lending space. Uh, some of it fairly basic and some we look at this space quite differently than most people. As far as why the attraction to private lending um, in the first place, um, you know, any time that there is a relative opportunity out there, I think people start looking at things. Um, you know, within the fixed in traditional fixed income space, interest rates are very low. A lot of investors uh, are unhappy getting maybe one or two or three percent from that part of their portfolio, and have started looking for alternative ways in order to make a return. Private lending and alternative yield products are definitely one of them, and there has been a fair bit of money moving to that space uh, because of the return opportunity. Um, in general, you know what we've seen over the last five, eight years as a lot of private lending funnies, funds have come about, uh, most of them are kind of seeing kind of long-term equity-like returns with debt-like characteristics, so that's very attractive as an investor. From the fact that I've probably looked at 50 to 100 different private lending managers throughout North America and parts of the world uh, as far as investment opportunities for ourselves, I would say first and foremost, most of these managers focus is on capital preservation. I think from an investor standpoint, that resonates quite well. The, um, as far as low correlation and consistency of returns, the low correlation part, I think, is a little bit uh, oversold. You know, the fact is, is that these private lending funds um, don't have to deal with uh, market sentiment pricing. You know, typically a lot of these loans are held at par unless there's an impairment to it. So you are going to tend to have low correlation just because they don't price. So it's not necessarily fair to compare them to equities or uh, traded fixed income as far as a correlation statistic, yet they do have low correlation. Uh, consistency of returns though is obviously something that uh, a lot of people find very attractive. One thing that we spend a fair bit of time trying to explain to investors if we had more than say 10 minutes today is uh, really what we're trying to capture. What's been embedded in my brain over the last say 28 years of in the financial business is typically if you're attaining a higher return you have to take more risk in order to get it. Um, we feel and have spent the last 20 plus years focused on hedge funds and alternative investments and a big part of our focus is trying to find areas where there's inefficiencies where you can capture that excess return without really taking much more risk. We think what we're doing within this fund um, is trying to pick up a whole bunch of inefficiencies or, or, or kind of yield premiums um, and uh, you know I've kind of listed a few there. You know, one is that whole macro environment as far as the banks reducing their allocation to a lot of lending. That happened actually started happening before 0809, by the way, but definitely accelerated since then in certain areas. Illiquidity risk, um, you know, there's definitely a premium that could be had for size of a transaction. I know that a $5 million ABL tra uh, transaction whereby maybe we can put out a yield at 12%, that same pro that same loan with the same LTVs on the same assets on a $50 million size transaction, you're getting eight or 9%. Size is a key and it's a way to pick up premium. Um, a whole bunch of other inefficiencies such as price discovery, it's very inefficient for uh, companies that are trying to find when they realize they can't get a bank uh, financing for them to kind of find who actually to go to, uh, to get a loan from. Uh, very inefficient and uh, create some uh, price discrepancy out there and, and yield premium. The focus of our fund, you know, and one of our, what we're trying to do is we're focused on kind of loan sizes in that one to $25 million marketplace. We're doing that to partially capture that size premium and partially because we feel that that market's fairly inefficient from a first service, you know, uh, uh, point of view as well uh, from the fact that most of the players are very regional focused, uh, not, not kind of North American wide. What is it that the Next Edge Private Debt Fund is? It's an open-ended offering memorandum kind of evergreen uh, vehicle that uh, currently it's about uh, $400 million of capital deployed uh, throughout North America. It was started almost uh, just under five years ago and it's spoken, focused on lending to businesses throughout North America with the focus on you know, the um, 
on factoring, which is kind of the purchase of receivables as a means of financing businesses. It's focused on asset-based lending to businesses, as well as to specialty finance, which is a kind of a form of asset-based lending, whereby we're lending to actually other lending companies. Portfolio is vastly diversified, has 173 different positions, uh, 161 unique clients. Uh, 126 of them are factoring clients or, or facilities. Uh, 35 asset-based loans, 12 specialty finance transactions. And uh, when I say vastly diversified, not just by numbers, but by regions as well. Uh, currently we have clients or transactions or loans out in 32 different states and six different provinces uh, throughout North America. So vast scope uh, uh, as far as our origination efforts. Currently the portfolio is about 55% allocated to the US and 45% in Canada. Um, we tend to try and have a yield bogey as far as what we're trying to get as far as a, a minimum yield from our transactions in our portfolio. Uh, currently the gross yield in the portfolio is about 12.3%. You know, from that you would take off our management fee, performance fee, and some operating expenses and it's kind of uh, ha that how we kind of uh, control our minimum return hurdle to our clients, uh, which is kind of in that eight to 10 barrier. We have a vastly experienced credit team, so we've partnered with a, a credit shop that's been around for 21 years. Um, of our eight, nine senior members of our credit team, I believe seven of them have in excess of 20 years of private lending experience. It's a very, very experienced team we've been, been able to assemble um, based throughout North America. In addition to that, and we think that just as important as um, credit underwriting is origination efforts, um, we have originators uh, place throughout Canada as well as North America. We think access to actually finding, you know, these transactions in the first place is, is just as important as doing the proper underwriting. Your underwriting is gonna be only as good as the deals you're able to try and work on in the first place. So we, we put a lot of time, effort, and, and uh, a significant amount of capital towards that. Very quickly, uh, I mentioned that these are the three areas that we focus on within the fund. Factoring is really just the purchase of receivables as a means of financing a business. We're not giving a loan to the, to the business in this case. What we're doing is we're looking at their end debtors, the receivables, which is an asset on their books, and essentially it's a purchase of sale agreement. We're buying those assets, taking legal title of those assets, making sure that those receivables are real, that the goods and services that were delivered are in good standing, that their intention is to pay. And then once we do that, we take legal title to them and they have to pay us. On average, we're lending between say 79 to 90% on the dollar, getting them credit insured as well as taking personal and corporate guarantees on those uh, businesses that we're buying the receivables from. Asset-based lending is literally a loan to a business. On average, you know, our typical term is a one-year demand facility. And what we're doing, in addition to looking at the health of the business, which is somewhat important in the sense that we want to make sure the company's around, um, you know, in a few years, um, but uh, very important and key and parcel to everything we do here, there has to be an asset backing that transaction. So we will lend against things like receivables, you know, in an asset-based lending transaction, we're not buying the receivable, we're just lending against the value of them. Um, inventory, uh, real estate and equipment, the last three we're getting independently appraised. Uh, on a net orderly liquidation value on the inventory and real estate and a forced liquidation value on the, uh, on the equipment. The uh, specialty finance lending is really just a form of asset-based lending. In this case, we're just lending to other lenders, uh, such as you know, in North Carolina, there's a fairly significant uh, factoring business that's been around for quite a while. Um, you know, we actually lend to them based on the value of their factoring book. That's kind of a quick summary of what we do. Um, how have we been able to perform? You know, our target is in that eight to ten percent net return uh, basis. Um, you know, on our you know kind of uh, institutional or fee-based class, we've done around nine over the last four and a half years. Um, you know, we know that there are some other funds that have done a little better than that. Um, one thing that I would say is that our loans are almost all in a first you know senior secured first position basis and that all of our loans are asset-backed, you know, collateral-backed, so it does make a little bit of a variant. 